Thank you, Chris, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished colleagues, friends, and the rest of you. My name is Bill Morgan. I'm from the Pacific Northwest National Lab, which is adjacent to the Hanford site in eastern Washington state in the USA. And my task today is twofold. Firstly, on behalf of Committee One, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the organizing committee for putting together this symposia. It's a wonderful location. The organization and the food have all been spectacular. My second task is to provide you an overview of the tasks that C1 is undertaking at the moment and basically to whet your appetite for Thursday morning symposium organized on behalf of C1 by our secretary Werner Room and one of our liaisons from Unscare, Malcolm Crick. So I will give you a brief overview of what's going on at C1 and they will fill in a lot of the details on Thursday. So the ICRP mission overall is to advance for the public benefit the science of radiological protection by providing recommendations and guidance on all aspects of radiation against ionizing radiation. Now obviously no committee can provide guidance on all aspects. So committee one, under the auspices of the main commission and with assistance from the scientific secretary, examines radiation effects. And our primary tasks are to consider the risk of induction of cancer and heritable disease, better known as stochastic effects, together with understanding the underlying mechanisms of radi radiation action. C1 also considers the risks, severity, and mechanisms of tissue and organ damage, and how these can lead to developmental defects under the rubric of deterministic effects. And these are not only just cancer, but also include cardiovascular disease and central nervous system effects. And to a lesser extent, these days after report 118, cataracts. I am very fortunate to chair a really excellent committee. It's very interactive, it's very congenial. We are very well represented internationally and we are well above the 20% gender balance. But more importantly, we have the appropriate expertise on C1 to address our mission. There has been one change to, or two changes to Committee One since this photo was taken last year at our annual meeting in Beijing. Our then secretary, and I think if I can use the mouse, Alice Sigerton up here has retired we have, uh, I'm sorry, our vice chair, Alice Sigerton, has retired. We have a new chair, Simon Buffler, who's hiding at the back here. And we have a new member of the committee, Andre Wojcik from the University of Stockholm, who joined us this year for this meeting. So here are our responsibilities and activities. We continue to monitor data from the A-bomb survivors. And while I stress in this slide the A-bomb survivors, we're also very cognizant of other large research programs. And we consider things like the Southern Neuro Biomedical Institute, the SUBI. We consider ongoing tasks at IAEA, at UNSCARE, and numerous other international bodies, other large programs that study radiation effects. We also look at a number of the biologically based programs internationally, the big European Commission programs, Opera, Concert, Malady, Do Re Mi, Epirad Bio, et cetera. What's left of the US low dose radiation program and other low dose radiation programs in India, Korea, and Japan. And we consider the use of biologically based dose response profiles for looking at effects of low doses. 
And this is one of our primary tasks, in my view, and we consider low doses to be those radiation doses less than 100 millisievert. So we try to take into account what's new in the scientific, epidemiological, modeling, physics, and clinical arenas, and all the international programs that contribute these data and information to the committee in order to make the best recommendations we can to the main commission. The primary task we're following at the moment are implications of dissymmetry. We're looking at dose rate effect and dose effect factors. We spend some time on changes in the profile of the initial DNA damage, repair, and its subsequent consequences, and epigenetic changes in the genome. We look at long-term inflammatory effects, and partic with particular emphasis on non-cancer effects, including cardiovascular disease and CNS effects. We keep abreast of the information on heritable effects, and more importantly, we have experts involving the new technologies, the genome-wide association studies, the omics technologies, changes in the genome informatics, so that we can apply our expertise to making the best recommendations possible. But I want to stress we do em emphasize low dose and low dose rate effects. And the reason for this is two or threefold. We know that CTs are the biggest contributor to low-dose radiation exposure, and many of these exposures occur in normal, healthy populations. And CTs have immense medical benefits. In this one here, you can see a lung tumor, you can see lung fibrosis, and you can probably see what caused it, the gentleman's packet of cigarettes in his pocket. So while we can get a lot of information from CT scans. What we're finding now as the public are becoming more aware that CTs involve radiation exposure, we frequently get calls saying, my son or my daughter fell out of bed. They hurt their head, they had a headache. So I went to the emergency room and the doctor recommended a CT scan. My son or my daughter had the CT scan and it turned out to be negative. So my child was irradiated unnecessarily. And they are concerned. What are the effects of this unnecessary radiation? We're also finding, as you'll see in ICR report 125, that there's increased use of low dose radiation for security purposes, especially in the border towns in the US. And you can see in this figure here, the truck coming along and scanning. And you regularly see these in parking lots, just driving through, looking for contraband and other such things in the parking lot, and also looking for illegal immigrants. So there are a number of normal, presumably healthy individuals being exposed to low doses of radiation. And this is one of the primary reasons for our emphasis on low-dose radiation effects. Let me give you a couple of examples on, of task groups under the auspices of C1. I'm very proud of task group 75, chaired by Otsu Niwa, with immense input and help from Jolie and Henry, which was established a number of years ago to review the current state of knowledge of stem cell radiobiology and the potential impacts on cancer risk. So there's been an explosion of interest and information on stem cells, but little information on the effects of radiation on what we presume is a critical target for radiation carcinogenesis. This was a labor of love for, this com for the task group. It has been extensively revised and reviewed and approved by the main commission for publication and is currently in press and should be available 
any day. And on behalf of ICRP, I would like to acknowledge the leadership of Otsura and Jolien and their very hardworking and productive committee, Mary Helen, Ruth, John, Peter, Michelle, Tom, Jerry Shea, Mike Story, KG, and Shuguchi. These people put an immense amount of time and effort into it. And while they prepared the document, a number of you in this room re critically reviewed this document, and we had a significant input, which made it a much better document, and we acknowledge and appreciate all your input. Task group 64 is cancer risk from alpha emitters, chaired by Margot. This was the group that provided the radon report in publication 115. They are now expanding that report to look at radon effects in males and females and as a function of smoking history and expanding it to include other alpha emitters like plutonium, uranium, and thorotrast. There has been some delays in this program outside of the task group's control, but now this committee met earlier this month, they're back on track, and we look forward to having this document in the foreseeable future. And I'd like to acknowledge the input of committee two, who are providing a lot of the dissymmetry for this, because I don't want you to think that C1 acts alone. We do get significant input from the other committees. Task Group 91 is a relatively new committee on radiation risk inference at low dose and low dose rate. And this is being examined for the purposes of radiation protection exposures. It's chaired by Werner Room, and the primary members are Tamara from Subi, who can provide information on the MIAC workers, Simon Buffler from Public Health England, who will provide the cell and molecular information. Roy Shaw, formerly at RARF, who will provide data on the lifespan studies. And Gail Wallachak from Northwestern, who will provide the information on the animal studies. They're going to be assisted by a number of corresponding me members that you see listed below. And I would like to acknowledge both Linda Walsh and Mark Little, who are doing all the analysis the meta-analysis primarily of the data generated by this task group. Their specific role is to ex examine and review the estimation of risk coefficients and recommend whether or not to continue using a, D a dose rate effect or a dose rate effect or DDREF and determine whether such coefficients are applicable to low dose rate exposures. And you're going to hear more from Jolien on Thursday about this task group and the progress they have made to date, which in my opinion has been significant. In conjunction with task group 91, there has been a working, men, working group, a working party on circulatory disease detriment, chaired by Nabuki Oban, the goal is to determine circulatory disease detriment, particularly for heart disease and stroke. And they're gonna focus on the meta-analysis of the ABOM survivors and other cohorts and develop a biologically based model for determining detriment that'll be flexible for use over time. Having Nabukio came and presented the working party's progress to the main commission, and clearly this is a bigger task than we had originally envisaged, and while there were no formal meetings planned, I think in the future it will be beneficial to get this group together into the room to hammer out some of these questions and problems. The other task group is under as terminology and definitions, it's actually under the auspices of the main commission, not committee one, but it's chaired by Wolfgang Dua from C1, so we claim some responsibility for it. You can see a list of the members here. 
with representatives from each of the five committees and a number of corresponding me members from different liaison organizations or different universities. And <coughs> this sounds like a, a, an easy task, but when you try and get terminology and definitions sorted out for the diversity of responses from chemistry, physics, biology, and medicine in a common term, a common definition, and a common, a common reason of why we came up with that definition. So this, pro, this uh, task group is making progress. There's divided, finally found of the different, there's a number of different t terms that have been used in different ICR reports with different definitions so as to try and make them all common that we can use in the future and have it web-based. Some of those definitions are unequivocal. Some are pretty close, but not there yet. Others are non-existent, and others are being strongly debated as we speak. So we had envisaged this to be a relatively straightforward task. It's much more complicated, and we'd like to come up with a common set of terms for future use by the RCP, ICRP that will be web-based and accessible for all. C1 met last year in Beijing, China, sponsored by Kufan Son. We hope to meet next year in Chennai, which is very close to Kerala, the high back down area in India. The C1 meeting will be run in conjunction with the International Conference on Radiobiology and the biennial meeting of the Indian Society of Radiation Biology. It will be hosted by C1 member Preetha Rajaman, and we're getting significant input from two of our colleagues that are both program managers at the NIH, NCI, Mansoor Ahmed, and Pat Prasanna. And I would like to conclude my talk here and postpone any questions you might have until after my colleagues, the other committee chairs have presented, and we can answer any questions in the discussion time. Thank you all. <laughs>